Hello everyone. During this presentation, let's see how QLC Chain is building the blockchain for telecom infrastructure sharing. A brief introduction about QLC Chain. It provides the blockchain infrastructure with telecom service capabilities. The core engineers have extensive experience in the telecom industry, which is the industry that we focused since day one. Before we start sharing the use cases, let's review the network evolution. Things began to change significantly during the 3G era. Facebook and other online platforms entered the mobile sector. 4G introduced the rich media experience. We seamlessly watch YouTube, Netflix, or listen to Spotify. Network evolution is not just an evolution of speed. It is an evolution of the internet-based business model, digital payments, sharing economy, social media, and more. With the imminent 5G, it is no surprise that an explosion of new business models and a new era of connectivity is coming. Internet of Things, virtual reality, connected cars, smart homes, and smart cities. For operators, it means yet another major investment in the infrastructure to upgrade networks and to purchase new spectrum. It also means investing in radio access network, transmission, and core networks. McKenzie predicts that, for some operators, the total cost of ownership would roughly double between 2020 and 2025. What about the returns? With the continuous increase of capital expenditure, the consumers are not necessarily willing to pay much extra for it. Return on investment from 4G was not as great as it was with earliest generations. Most importantly, all those huge gains made by applications, as for example payment, content delivery, or fintech, are built on top of the operator's infrastructure, but they are not harvested by the operator themselves due to the limited billing model. How to incentivize operators to upgrade the infrastructure to achieve yet another leap of economic growth with 5G is the topic we will address today. The solution that we are proposing is to implement a blockchain-based technology that helps to lower the capital expenditure, to save billing loss, and to bring up new business models. The solution needs to support various specific features that are suitable for telecom industry, including a unique and trusted ID system, a billing and clearance platform for cross-carrier service and for infrastructure sharing, and also a blockchain-based boss for swift billing. Let's have a look at the first use case, a blockchain-based bus, which can run in parallel with the traditional bus. In the new bus system, we first assign digital ID and confirm asset ownership for various devices like routers, IoT devices, and everyone's smartphone. There is also strong demand of security and privacy in this area to protect the digital ID's privacy. After IDs are assigned and different parties get involved in billing and charging process via the new bus, in result, we will get a high liquidity and customized market for services. On the ID part, our solution is to issue eSIM card that stores private key and integrates with wallet function so the wallet can integrate and support the payment. On the business side, with this flexible bus system, various services including music, news, video conferences can register on blockchain and then broadcast to users. Users can access and trigger the smart contract for consumption and also complete the payment. Cross-carrier clearance is also one of the most important applications that is foreseeable to save significant cost from third party and increase execution efficiency. For every part of operators who have data and SMS agreement, we register those packages on the blockchain. In our global SMS billing and clearance system, we treat every outgoing message as a transaction and create a repository of verifiable transactions between operators. By using such a shared ledger design, the cross-carrier clearance can have shorter charging time and reduce the telecom clearance fraud. As a result, the infrastructure can help with cost saving. With the implementation of blockchain, the telcos can track and bill accurately, save the cost generated from gray routing, as well as the third-party clearance house fee for inter-carrier SMS and data clearance. Also, it could be used as a new platform for Envino wholesale, namely between Envino and the parent company. Another emerging trend is edge computing. 
our devices are getting more and more powerful, so a lot of data processing and computing can happen locally. Major advantages are reduced latency and offloaded data centers. Co-location of transmission, storage, and computing occurs. As the Internet of Things will continue to expand, the amount of generated data will skyrocket. All devices will be connected, not only cars and watches, but also vacuum cleaners and refrigerators. All this data can be hugely valuable when properly analyzed, used for AI training and machine learning. So there is a demand for a trusted and secure data market. Consumers need to know their data is secure, and also they are incentivized to share it. With the existing blockchain infrastructure, Carrier can further lower the capex by reducing infrastructure sharing, including RAN sharing, bandwidth sharing, storage sharing, and data sharing. In this way, carriers can monetize the owned infrastructure and offer them to the other telcos who are in need. As 5G deployment starts, we will see more and more RAN sharing agreements coming across the telcos, and also the transport sharing facilitated by peer-to-peer -peer network will largely offload the backbone traffic. Last but not least, value as service. Direct carrier billing. Most recently, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, along with other internet company giants, is planning to tap into the payment industry by introducing new cryptocurrencies, Libra, that are meant to allow users to send money to contacts on their messaging system. Analysts from Barclays predict that this movement will bring 19 billion of additional revenue for Facebook, and this market can be easily harvested by telcos, if not already done so, in certain African countries, because Facebook is trying to tap into the unbanked area, however not network-connected areas. So carriers should use the advantages that they are the closest to end consumers, either with voice, SMS, and data, and also the closest to the network services, meaning the applications built on top, including Facebook, to construct the complete billing platform with the eSIM solution we talked about before. This is a tremendous step to promote financial inclusion, and we believe it will be first to be adopted among certain developing areas. Secondly, the anti-fraud service. China Crime Index shows that every category of crime is decreasing, only telecom fraud increases. Taking the UK as an example too, according to the UK finance data, telemarket scam resulted in over £350 million lost last year, which equals to the annual GDP of Philippines also last year. For example, Bank A implemented this function on its online banking platform that customer can use the portal, input his or her number, and check all messaging records sent from the bank. In this way, scam messages from pseudo base station won't be fooling people. We have a live demonstration of this service. As a matter of fact, we have already rolled it out to the market with our Chinese partner, Monet. At last, let's interpret the change from a higher level. Due to the widely applied network virtualization, network access layer and the internet will be combined into one offered by network operators. The application layer and transport layer combined into the value transaction layer consisted of nodes validating asset transactions on the network. In the middle, there is a digital ID layer, which is essential. The future network we are aiming to build is software-based, flexible for asset exchange, also capable of providing services on demand, every service that it requires a network connection, or carrier networks. So the whole network in the future we imagine is fragmented with different services, applications. The decoupled network and applications will be merged and then chopped into different pieces. It's like blend flour with water and make different shapes of dumplings out of it. We believe that network is the key connector to the massively distributed commercial world. When the applications and transport layers are merged, the telecommunication network will not be just a pipeline, but deeply integrated with various services, computing, content, host, storage, payment, transmission, enabled by the ideal billing system. And finally, there will be only three roles in the cyberspace, regulators or standardization bodies, network operator and asset owner at the same time trader. A user could be both an asset owner who owns the data and also a trader who purchases a service. Thank you all.